It's Monday, February the 19th, 2024. Welcome to the Daily Article Podcast. I'm Chris Elkins, narrating today's Daily Article, written by Denison Forum co-founder and CEO, Dr. Jim Denison. Does life have a purpose that transcends the happenstance and coincidence of our chaotic world? If so, how do we find it each day? In honor of President's Day, let's begin with this coincidence. In late 1863, Robert Todd Lincoln, the president's oldest child, fell onto the tracks at the Jersey City Railroad Station. He was pulled to safety by Edwin Booth, the older brother of John Wilkes Booth. Here's another coincidence related to President Lincoln. Wilmer McLean owned the places where the Civil War began with the first battle of Bull Run on his Virginia plantation in July 1861 and ended at his Appomattox Courthouse home where General Lee surrendered to General Grant in April of 1865. And many have noted the striking coincidences between Abraham Lincoln and John F. Kennedy. Among them, both had seven letters in their last names. They were elected 100 years apart in 1860 and 1960. Both were assassinated on a Friday in the presence of their wives. Both assassins were known by three names with 15 letters in each complete name. Oswald shot Kennedy from a warehouse and fled to a theater. Booth shot Kennedy in a theater and fled to a barn, a kind of warehouse. Both succeeding vice presidents were Southern Democrats and former senators named Johnson with 13 letters in their names and born 100 years apart in 1808 and 1908. Of course, we can find coincidences nearly everywhere if we look hard enough. Consider that the famed physicist Stephen Hawking died on the birthday of Albert Einstein and Pi Day, March the 14th, which reads 3.14, and three U.S. presidents died on July the 4th, John Adams and Thomas Jefferson in 1826, and James Monroe in 1831. In a day when only 20% of Americans are satisfied with the direction of our country, with tragedies like yesterday's shooting in Minnesota and last week's heartbreak in Kansas City still grieving our nation with suicides, exhaustion, and social isolation on the rise, there is some comfort in the sense that the world is not as random and chaotic as it seems. Is this the best we can do to find the hope our souls need? David Brooks' latest New York Times column is headlined, The Cure of What Ails Our Democracy. In it, he makes an appeal for, quote-unquote, value pluralism, an idea he associates with the work of British philosopher Isaiah Berlin. As Brooks explains, we want to pursue a variety of goods, but unfortunately, these goods can be in tension with one another. Therefore, rather than imposing our values on others in a battle of good versus evil, we should seek to balance competing goods in a way that benefits society as a whole. Such tolerance is appealing in a secularized culture that has abandoned absolute truth and objective morality. However, absent the ability to appeal to objective truth, Who has the objective right to say that such balance is best for us? Surely, everyone has some set of beliefs they are convinced everyone should adopt, such as prohibiting murder and protecting innocent people. But as Hamas's October 7th invasion of Israel and Russia's invasion of Ukraine show, not everyone agrees. In Job 12, verse 25, Scripture says of all who reject God's word and will, they grope in the darkness without light. However, there is, from John 1, verse 9, a true light which gives light to everyone. The Bible says in Hebrews 2, verse 17, that Jesus had to be made like his brothers in every respect so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God to make propitiation for the sins of the people. Now, from verse 18, because he himself has suffered when tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. St. Augustine explained, quote, In Christ you were tempted, for Christ received his flesh from your nature, but by his own power gained glory for you. Therefore, he suffered temptation in your nature, but by his own power gained victory for you. If in Christ we have been tempted, in him we overcome the devil. Do you think only of Christ's temptation and fail to think of his victory? See yourself as tempted in him and see yourself as victorious in him. He could have kept 
kept the devil from himself, but if he were not tempted, he could not teach you how to triumph over temptation. End quote. Now, when we turn to Christ with our challenges and trust him for our victory, we can claim the fact from Psalm 30, verse 5, that weeping may tarry for the night, but joy comes in the morning. And from James 1, verse 3, we can know that the testing of our faith produces endurance. In the face of overwhelming national and personal crises, the prophet proclaimed confidently to God in Jeremiah 17, verse 17, You are my hope in the day of doom. Can you say the same today? If not, why not? The Denison Forum team is grateful for our daily article podcast subscribers. Please share the podcast with others. And for more news discerned differently, visit denisonforum.org.